Make sure I have chat up. I think the first thing I'm going to do is soft serve ice cream. I know that was a request that came up a while ago. And I'm going to see if I can do it. Hush. Shh. Okay. We got that up. All right. So first of all, I need to remember what soft serve ice cream looks like. Even though I did work at Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen for like four years. Okay, uh, let's take the easy way out. Because off the top of my head, the only thing I can think of is if we wanted to make soft serve ice cream cone, we'll probably start with a primitive. That was a spiral here, so we're gonna go into edit mode. Let's go into matte cap gray, and let's go into initialize. So. Before we hit make poly mesh 3D and we can sculpt on this thing, let's initialize this and let's go to the radius here and we'll go thin to thick to thin, something like this. Coverage, we can make that a little bit looser. And then profile, it's fine. Thickness. Go ahead and thicken that up just a bit, and then we'll thin it out <coughs> towards the end here. Now this gets a little bit tricky. I'll have to see if I can fix that up there. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, Z offset is fine. Twist is fine. Now. On some of these, it does have like a hard edge that goes like this way. So I can maybe use those twists to kind of go in and maybe delete some of these edges here. Let's do a, let's do a couple different versions. So I'm going to take this one. And I'll say make polymesh 3D. And then I'll go back to my helix and then I'll twist it up. That's going to even them out, right? Yeah. So I'll twist this one up. And then we'll make polymesh 30. And we'll see what we can get out of that. Uh, double click the dynamic in ZBrush 4R8. So basically if you want to turn this off, it's not shift click anymore, it's double click. So now that we have this shape here, let's go ahead and see if we can fix this top part here. So if we have double turned on, that'll make us see this a little bit better. So let's go ahead and fix this top part here. And that just kind of like loops over like, so I'm going to see if I can't do a quick uh, group by normals. There we go. So if you do group by normals, you can drop that angle down, you'll grab these two. So really what I'm looking for is this one here. And I'm going to select this piece here, invert that. W. So now if we do Control Shift X to expand, no, Control Shift S to shrink. Let's walk this thing back down. Yeah. Hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's try this. Let's go into Q Mesh, Polygroup All, and then you can pull this one out and hold down to Control. So that's going to give me the number that I want. And then uh, I'm going to hit W, control tap this one to go ahead and make this into its own subtool here. Let's go ahead and hold down shift and we'll just move it up like so. So I'm going to try and bridge this thing here. And I don't know how we got two of these copies here. Let's get rid of this one. All right. And let's go ahead and hit control W. So let's grab this one again. Yeah, why is it grabbing both of these? Not the same polygroup, not the same polygroup. Goodness. Okay, so control shift S to shrink. And we'll walk this back just a bit. And then we'll go ahead and delete hidden. And for some reason, it's grabbing all of my polygroups ever. It's a bit weird. Okay, then we'll take this one here. 
and this will be our little top piece here. I'll go ahead and shrink this down and then I'll go in here and I'll go Q mesh polygroup all and I'll pull this down and let's go ahead and turn off double so that one's fine we have an open hole here oh but you know what it's actually two holes here mmm this is getting a little bit crazier than I thought it was going to I wonder if I can take a spline out of here and just wrap that as a curve. Let's maybe try that. Because, yeah, once. Or, you know, this end is a lot easier to work with than this end. Let's try this again. Let's go up here to Helix 3D. Let's go ahead and do our thickness. I want this side to be thin, this side to be thick. I don't know what happened with that earlier helix. What did I change? Because that looks pretty straightforward. I wonder if it was the coverage. No. We lessen the coverage. Thicken this end up and then thin this end out. Yeah, see, that should be pretty straightforward. I don't know what I did. Okay. Um, and if we want to, okay, so we go ahead and say make polymesh 3D. So on this one here, if you want to kind of shrink this one down, hold down W and hold down Control, and that'll just kind of mask along this section here. And then we can just go in here with our move brush and we can just kind of move this down. Now you can also go in here to your move brush and go into auto masking and turn on topological. Let's put that range down just a little bit. Or you can go to B M move topological here and you can just move that down. So now if we take this one, let's go ahead and do a group by normals here. Let's take this Q mesh polygroup all and we'll hold down control, pop out a copy of this one. And then hit W, hit control or hold down control and then when you tap this one we can swing this up and kind of loop this over so we're going to kind of loop this around here and then we'll Q mesh this out and let's go ahead and shrink this one down too so if I hold down or just scale this down and then hold down control and pop out a copy of this one we'll loop this over and we'll shrink this down hold down control and we'll loop this over and we'll shrink this down Something like this. So now what we can do is go ahead and just go here to delete. Uh, we'll do a flat island and we'll just delete that flat island and we'll just use bridge to kind of bridge these together here. Something like that. And now we can go here to bridge, two holes, spline should work okay. Kind of just wrap these around here. Control W, and I think this will work fine. So let's go ahead and do another quick group by normals. And we can also do possibly, let's go into our zero measure options. We'll say keep groups, same, smooth groups, down to zero. We can also try keep border if we don't want to change our geometry that much. Let's see what that does. So we'll say freeze border here. And that goes ahead and does it do anything weird? Oh, you know what? These angles got picked up. So let's go ahead and just do a quick polygroup flat island, and we'll just manually polygroup these. Hmm. All right, let's try that again. That's about right. Now you can always recap these if you want to. So you can just grab this one, invert that selection. Grab this one, invert that selection. And then you can just go delete hidden. And now you can just go through here and you can cap this. Just go close, convex hole. And I probably should have turned adaptive size down to zero to get a little bit more even quads. Something like that. And if you want to wrap this one around again, you can just hold down control and just pull this through. 
and then you can just reposition this and you can start you know wrapping this thing let's go ahead and smooth this one out just a little bit here and then hold down control while we drag we can spin this around cool hey everybody thanks for showing up a uh, question from Game Dev Fred. I Mike, when creating custom menus, is it possible to reorder the submenus in the custom menu? All I seem to be able to do is rename the submenus. As far as I know, uh, you cannot, unless that's changed in our uh, P2. If you guys haven't upgraded to Zebras for our 8 P2, I would go ahead and do that since there's a lot of cool stuff that's um, either been changed or is back. A couple things off the top of my head is you have to double click these little dividers now. So you can't just single click them anymore, which is nice because sometimes I'll be over here touching these buttons and I'll accidentally close my tools down so now this is a double click um, the first one we went over is this dynamic up here you double click those now to turn it off and it also stay with your brushes now instead of shift clicking dynamic you just double click it and then uh, my personal favorite is if we go over here to a primitive here grab this one we'll go into make poly mesh 3d let's go ahead and just dynamesh this thing um, so let's say you're going through here and you're clipping like so, and you got a shape and you want to start making straight lines. So you have this standard brush, if you hold down shift, it's going to pop this thing out. And of course you can just let go of shift and then you can pull down here. And then as you start holding down shift, you can snap this to like a 45 degree angle and whatnot. So an alternative to that is if you go up here to stroke and you turn off your lazy mouse or you can just hit the L button. Now you can hold down shift and it'll constrain it to a straight line. So sometimes if you need to like, you know, go thick to thin, you can kind of you just hold down shift and if you want to go in a particular angle you just go into W uh, hit Y to go into transpose mode and now when you put this into a straight line it's like we want to go in this angle now just hold down control and tap this white little ball here and now when you hold down shift it'll constrain it to a straight line in this axis so I use this all the time so this option is back so you can use that to and you, know, you can also go across here so if you you know you don't have to make your camera vertical to here you can just hold down shift and just pull along and go thick to thin here which can sometimes be useful and you can also build up your strokes as well so if we go here W uh, just drag it along here hold down control that'll move your camera so now you can just go in this line here and now you can just hit one to replay last and that'll go ahead and just replay your last stroke or if you also if you want to dig in hold down alt and constrain it to a 45 degree angle and then one to replay your last stroke and that'll just keep pushing it in there so, one of my favorites there. Um, no video feed? Everybody see me okay? OBS looks fine. Cool. So, we've got... Where do we end up? Okay, we've got this thing here. So, now we need to finish this thing out. So, I'm going to go into edit mode here. Hit control N. And let's go ahead and grab a cylinder. So, I'm going to take this cylinder here. And uh, where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, 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 cylinder 3D. Go into edit mode here. Make a poly mesh 3D, or don't make a poly mesh 3D, but turn on poly mesh. Go to initialize here. I'm going to simplify this one. I'm going to say like maybe 12 divides, V divides of 3, and then we'll go ahead and make this, or you know, let's make this 16, or maybe 24. 16 should be fine. Make poly mesh 3D. Go into geometry, and let's start modeling this thing out. So if I want to match something here, Let's go ahead and take, that's got like a little waffle on the side. That might be fun. Something basic here. Save image as desktop. Okay. So I'm going to go here to texture, import, desktop. And we'll grab this one. I'm going to select that one, hit plus. And now we can have uh, put this in spotlight. Hit Z, and now we can just model behind here. So if I go ahead and just match this bottom piece here, we hit W. Let's hit Y to go back into Gizmo mode here. Now we can just go ahead and push this up so that it matches uh, this thing here. I'm probably going to insert multiple, get that shape. So I guess we can go ahead and just keep it. So we'll make this about yay big. And then we'll go ahead and hold down Control Alt, oops, and we'll go ahead and scale this out. So I'm going to go to Unmesh Mesh Center here, and now we can just scale this out to get that shape. 
And now we can go ahead and say, okay, insert. Actually, do we want to do that? Let's do, let's go down to here. So we're going to go, hold down control, alt, and then move this down here. And now we'll scale it up. So that'll give us this one here. And now we can go to our Z modeler brush, BZM. And let's go to insert single edge loop. And we'll put one in here. Now to get this rounded shape here, let's go ahead and make sure there's a space between here so we can kind of transition to this shape here. And we're going to go ahead and go to insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. And I can just start inserting multiple and just bump that up a little bit. Now for this shape here, I could go ahead and just like weld a, a sphere onto the bottom of this thing here. But I think we can also do the same thing if we just go up here to Q mesh, polygroup island and just Q mesh this up. Hmm. I want to I want to pull this straight up. I think. Well, I can always control that. So what I can do is I can just Q mesh polygroup island, move this up, and then make sure this moves. So I'm going to hold down Control Alt, and then move this up into place, and then go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and then go ahead and scale this down. So this will be where the shape ends up. Now it needs to kind of bulge out at the sides here. So again, we'll just go in here to insert. Multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. And we'll just kind of bulge that out just a bit. There we go. And is there also another lip? Yeah, there's like another lip up here. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So let's go ahead and do insert multiple edge loop on this one. And we'll put in a slight little bulge here. Uh, if we want to make this a thickness, and it looks like this is like waffle here. So let's go ahead and make that waffle on the side. So we're going to insert multiple edge loops. I'm just finding more things to do. And we can just kind of match that waffle on the side here. And now I wonder if we can go, let's try this. Let's grab this piece here and then we'll get rid of that piece here. And now if we go to poly group, let's see if checker will work. Now we don't really need checker. We just need all of these, don't we? Yeah, these aren't, I was thinking they were, oh, some of them are. If you wanted to, I mean, you could do surface noise as well, but I'm trying to do this in the model here. So you can do poly group. Let's see what checker gives us. Um, there we go. Checker and all polygons. So that'll give you a checker pattern. And now you can go through here and you can go to inset polygroup all. You can inset these down and inset these ones. But of course, these are just going to give you uh, the square pattern here. But if you did want to do, you know, every other one, you could just go through here and Q mesh polygroup all. And then you could do like a checker pattern like that. Um, but in this case, I think we're just going to do with this visible. We can go to inset all polygons, just inset, uh, not inset region, but inset each one. And we got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So really, let's bring everything back. We don't want to go all the way down. We want to have these two. So I'm going to take this, select lasso, and we'll grab this top one here. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll fudge it, and we'll say six. So these are the ones I want to inset. So we'll go ahead and do inset all polygons here. Go ahead and inset those, and then we'll just Q-mesh these back. Bring everything back, and now those will go ahead. And uh, I wonder if we need to build in some control loops here. Let's go ahead and do that as well. So we inset that one a little bit here. So let's go ahead and do another inset polygroup all. And we'll go ahead and inset this one back, and then tap this one. And then go ahead and Q-mesh polygroup all. We'll Q-mesh this back a little bit, and then do the same for this one, and then Q-mesh Q -mesh this back a little bit more. Okay, when we do that one, when we Q-mesh this back, tap Alt to give it a new polygroup here, and then just tap this one. That'll give it the same polygroup. Perfect. And now we're going to Q-mesh that back a little bit more, and then tap this one. And now we're going to go to Inset Polygroup All. We'll inset this one just a little bit here, and then we'll inset it just a little bit more. And then we'll hit dynamic. Yeah, they need to be squares here. Hmm. And if I put control loops here, it's going to really flatten those things out. Think, think, think. Inset. I wonder if we just need to crease these things here. So an easier way to crease this would be to go ahead and so we had 16. Let's go ahead and go over here to our transform. And we'll do activate symmetry across the, well, we want radial symmetry across the Y here. And we'll say 16. Let's make our job a little bit easier. So 
So now you just go through here and we'll say crease edge and we will just crease, let's do crease edge loop partial and hopefully when it sees that and now let's go back here to crease edge and we'll just get rid of these creases here. I might just reserve resort to surface noise on this one because yeah I don't want to I want it to be round but I also want to push this in so you know what we're going to do we don't even have to resort to surface noise we can just resort resort to maybe light boolean because on rounded surfaces it's just a lot easier to not have to worry about resolving surfaces so we've got this one going here uh, if you wanted to have this ice cream actually go in here you could take this one let's go ahead and just do a group by normals and then you can just take this top one off here. Let's go ahead and go to back to X symmetry here. So we'll take this one, invert that, and now we'll just do Q mesh polygroup all. And you can just pull this in and then flip, which will be, oops, let's go ahead and delete hidden. You pull this in here. Now you can go here to display properties flip. Now I'm going to flip that around and give you an inner surface there. And now let's go ahead and do a crease tolerance of like 58, hit dynamic. And if it gives you that mesh integrity here, just go to Modify Topology, Mesh Integrity, Fix Mesh. And now we can hit D. And it looks like we need to weld this thing. Interesting. Let's go to Weld Points, which is under Geometry Modify Topology. There we go. D, D, hmm, let's see what's going on here, So when I Q-meshed in, it might have done some weird welding down here. So I'm just going to Q-mesh out, which shouldn't really change our profile all that much. Now when you hit D, oh, it does mesh those in. Okay, so what I'm going to do, instead of Q-meshing, let's do a simple extrude. We're going to go to extrude all polygons here and just pull that in. And then we'll flip. And now let's see if we messed anything up. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Okay, so Shift D, and I'm just going to go through here manually and just do like a crease edge loop complete here. And we'll crease this here, this here, this here. And we'll also crease polygroup, crease PG, that's under your crease menu. And now when we divide this up, we can tell it, um, I don't mind it being su super sharp, but if we go up here to like smooth subdivision level of like say four, uh, it still maintains its sharpness a little bit too much. We'll take our crease level down to three. And now when we smooth this out, we'll get a little bit of a smoother transition on the edges there. So now what we can do is we can take every single one of these squares and make that a Boolean mesh. So let's go ahead and we'll make this inner surface a little bit thicker as well. So we're going to hover over this, we'll go Q mesh polygroup all. And then as we start pushing this in, hold on shift and just kind of pull that in, make that a little bit thicker here. And it also looks like some of these, um, this thing kind of shoots out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is going to insert multiple edge loops. I'm going to pull this out and down a little bit and I can also it looks like it's already creased which is what I'm looking for here so there's just a little bit of a sharper transition edge uh, on this side as well and we can also if we want to let's try scaling edge loop complete if this scales from yeah perfect so it kind of just scales out and it also looks like it bevels just a bit so I'm going to take a bevel edge loop complete and we'll just pop that out just a bit all right, that's what I'm looking for. Um, so we've got this one here. And actually, it also looks like this doesn't quite come out as much. So I'm going to do a slide edge loop complete. I'm just going to move these things 
up and down just a bit. It's not quite uh, that transition here. Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, how's everybody doing? Um, shift one is a little bit different. So if you go up here to stroke and you go to uh, replay last, that's replay last relative. So that'll be, let me see if I can demonstrate that. If you grab this one here and let's say we go, um, so we go standard brush, let's go to drag dot and alpha six. So if you drag this out, focus it down to negative 100. Um, you drag this out and then you move your camera and then you do shift one, it'll do it relative to where your brush stroke is as opposed to replaying last, it'll put wherever your brush stroke is. Um, now doing it when your camera moves probably isn't that useful. So here, if we do this one and we do one, that'll do on the brush stroke here. Um, if we do shift one, it'll do wherever my brush is relative to my brush here. But, you know, probably not worth changing your camera a whole bunch. So if you're here, and again, you click once and then you do one, it'll replay your last stroke. If you click once and then you do shift one, it'll do it relative to where your brush is. So that's shift one. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Cool. Would you justify buying a quadro for ZBrush and Keyshot in Photoshop? If you got money to burn, go for it. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to definitely uh, do the Boolean uh, on his thing here. A little bit easier because, yeah, whenever you're doing, and this is another good example here, so if you're doing something like this as well, it's just a massive pain to get things to smooth correctly. So, for instance, if we take this cylinder here, I can polymesh 30, and we scale this out. Uh, one thing I'll do if I'm doing, like, uh, the suppressor at the end of a uh, a weapon here. So what we can do is just go down here. We'll do crease level down, dynamic. We'll go ahead and just apply this. And then I'll take this subtool here and we'll duplicate it and we'll rotate it this way. And we'll go ahead and scale this down and out. And then we'll hit W. And now if you hold down, it will put sticky on here. Now you could do an array mesh if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to turn on sticky and then I'm going to hold out um, W control. Let's see, unmask, W. Oh, you know what? Delete higher. There we go. I'm going to take out a copy, and I'm just going to hit 1 to replay last here. And then I'm going to hold down Control. No, we're going to duplicate this, and then hold down Shift. And we'll shoot this to the left, and we'll offset these just a bit. I mean, do, do whatever you want to with these things. It doesn't really matter. So now if we merge these things down... And we go ahead and just turn on D for dynamic subdivision here. Um, this is just a little bit easier. And we can let Z remesher do the heavy lifting for us. So if we go through here now and do a Boolean, let's go ahead and also do group by normals. There we go. Uh, so if we do a Boolean mesh uh, with this one, let's go ahead and say this is our start group here. And then this is our subtractive. We'll turn on live Boolean mesh. Looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and say make Boolean mesh dynamic subdivision. I'll take this one. And now I'm just going to take this one here, this poly group here, and then we're going to go to delete hidden, and now we can go to zero measure, um, adaptive size, target polygon count of half maybe, and zero mesh. So now zero measure will go ahead and make the surface okay for me to also have a curved surface with things plugged into it. Um, if that's a little bit much, let's do same. There we go. And now we can just simply Q mesh polygroup all. And that'll give us our thickness. Now we can do a crease polygroup. And we'll go in here with our crease level of like three, smooth subdiv of four. And now we have that kind of look. And that'll go ahead and resolve, you know, a cylindrical surface with things poked in without having to go in here and like build in a bunch of control loops that are going to destroy your overall mesh and also let Zero Mesher do the heavy work for you. So, same idea here which is basically making a high-res mesh, and then we'll just use um, this topology here to go ahead and inset and then punch in <coughs> a little square there. Um, 
Um, Walker Studios is getting nice bubbles after using live booleans. Hard edges give us is not so pretty. Yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel and you go to my playlists and you go to my ZBrush 48 What's New playlist. So I'll just go ahead and link you guys to that. Go to video. Whoops. Um, hold on just a second. <laughs> Hold on. Oh boy. Give me a second here. This is called Twitch. Thank you. Lord. Oop. What's my token? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes, please. Okay, it just reloaded my chat room. So anybody who's asked a question since the uh, <laughs> the Seabrush 48 one, uh, repost it. That's what I'm trying to post here is my, uh, if you go to that there, my Zebras 48 playlist here. If you go down here to modifying modifying sharp boolean intersections, I'll direct link you to this one too. This is number 18 in the video. That'll take you through a couple options there. There's 18. And that'll go ahead and uh, walk you through a couple options. We can also go through some here because I'm going to have to live boolean this thing. Anyway, so if we want the little squares in here, let's go ahead and duplicate this one off. And we'll hit Shift D. And now again, I want to take this one here. So I'm going to go to select lasso and that'll allow me to take these edge rings here. We want to go all the way down until we get here. We'll invert this one. We'll go ahead and delete hidden. And now we can use these as squares. So I'm going to do is go to inset polygroup all. And now we can go ahead and get rid of these uh, green ones here. Let's switch back to select rectangle. And now we can just do delete hidden. Now if we go here to QMesh polygroup all, we can just push these straight back. And now let's say, well, we want to flip them too. And then again, that's under your display properties. So this one, we're not going to use smooth. We're going to use Q grid. So if I go down here to our dynamic and we're going to say, okay, turn dynamic on. It's going to, to you know, crease all this stuff and do smooth. We can also just do Q grid of one and then you can change the coverage here. So let's go ahead and see what this is going to look like. So if we go over here to subtractive and we have live Boolean turned on, here, see, this is a result we're getting here. So if I want to, I can go ahead and go into solo mode here. If we don't want them coming out that far, let's see, they give us a new, yeah. So we can just take this one here, QMesh Polygroup All, and then just hold down Shift, and that will allow us to kind of push that in and out, and that looks fine. And then QGrid is giving us that look there. So now we're getting the cylindrical, and we're also getting the square pushed in. Whew. Okay, I think we're in good shape. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and just make that a live boolean. Everything else is done because we're going to put the ice cream in there. Although we don't really want it pushing all the way in. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So let's push this out just a bit. And we'll push this out just a bit. Very thin mesh. Give me a second. I'm going to push this way out. Hold on. Oh, you know what? It gave us extra geometry. <sighs> okay, so what I'm going to do to get rid of this thing, I'm going to hold on control shift, grab a little piece of it, control shift A, invert that, delete hidden. There we go. Goodness. I was like, and it shouldn't be pushing in that far. So let's push these back in. We're going to take this one, hold down shift, pull it along that surface normal. Turn on transparency with ghost maybe. And we'll just push this in. So here it is punching all the way through. We want to punch in just a little bit here. It's like, why is it doing that far? Okay. Push this out just a bit. A little bit more. Okay, I think that'll work. Uh, so we got our cone here. So if we go to live boolean so these are just dynamic booleans here so we uh, click this one to do shift d that's going to turn that off these ones will still stay uh, boolean because we've put that on there but we'll just go ahead and turn those both on and then we go to make our boolean mesh we're going to turn on dynamic subdiv make boolean mesh here and now we have our u mesh 
which is here. So this is our original U mesh we did that we went and remeshed, and then this is another U mesh. You could remesh this too if you wanted to. Uh, you've got all your poly groups still in there. I don't really need to. So what I'm going to do is just dynamesh this thing. Turn off blur, and we'll just go ahead and dynamesh this thing. Let's crank that resolution up a bit. Cool. And now I'm just going to go over here to polish, and we'll just polish this surface just a tad. That'll work. So now we've got this thing, and now we want to add our helix. So let's go ahead and go to append. And we'll make these things work together. So I'm going to turn on transparency. We can see that this is in here. I'm going to hold down, I'll turn off sticky. And then I'm going to reset this. And we'll just uh, go to unmesh mesh center. And we'll just shift this up and move this down. And then we'll go ahead and scale this out. Now we can hit D. And then I'll go ahead and turn on dynamic subdivs for this one. Turn off transparency. And now I can just move this in here. That'll work. So now um, let's go ahead and also I'm going to manually go through here. Let's go to transformation and we're activate symmetry in the Y. Let's go back to 16 maybe. And we're just going to hold down shift and we're going to manually just go through here and smooth this a bit. Let's change it to smooth stronger. All right. Does that look like a cone? Let's see. Okay, I think we've got all the major shapes in there. So let's send this over. Actually, let's tone this down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and shift smooth this just a tad. All right, let's go to do, 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 render, external render, key shot. I'll throw that over there real quick. Um, dynamic brush size, uh, way to make it universal so that it's always on. That I'm not sure about. I haven't played around with P2 too much, to be honest. Let's see, plastic, rough plastic. I don't know if there's a cone in here, so we'll just kind of eyeball it. So we'll put this on here, we'll double click this, and we'll go ahead and change this to like a light orangish, yellowish. Very desaturated. And also we'll change the roughness to be pretty, pretty rough. I suppose we could run a noise through it as well. And then this one here, let's go ahead and do looks like my environments are pretty crazy. Environment settings one. Nope, that's not right. Let's double click this one and we'll take that diffuse down just a bit. So we'll go ahead and just add a little bit of warmth. And if you want to, you can also go back in here. And I realize that this one is showing up a bit faceted. So what we're going to do is go in here to smooth subdiv of three, maybe even four if we wanted to. But we'll send that back over. There we go. So now here, and this one should be pretty shiny. Uh, it looks not that shiny. And we'll make this a little warmer here. And we'll also get rid of that environment color environment here. Let's go ahead and do a edit, add geometry ground plane. And on this ground plane here, we'll go ahead and make it shiny. And then here, we'll go ahead and just drop this on. And we'll make this pretty rough and pretty desaturated and a little bit darker here. I wonder, let's try a little bit of noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my material graph here. And let's go ahead and do textures. What's a good one? Then we'll also in here. Let's do a noise, fra just a noise. And we'll pass this noise into the bump. I guess we can also toss that into the specular as well. Just kind of break that up. And then we're going to go into our textures here. And we'll scale this way down. 
you know what, I think we just want it in the specular. Here, bump height magnitude, color one, color two. I think that'll work. And we can also maybe try diffuse, or maybe I want to do a different texture on the diffuse. So we'll go to textures, noise. So noise, more of a fractal noise. Let's try a fractal. And we'll pass this into the diffuse. And then for this one here, we'll do a color one of like this color. And then a color two. We'll go ahead and sample this color here. And we'll just change it just slightly. And then here we can change the hue real quick. So if you want to adjust both of those at the same time, we can do hue and saturation here. So we'll keep it about here, but we'll go ahead and desaturate it just a tad. And now you get a little bit darker. Just kind of dial that in. So that way I can get the mottledness of it and also adjust the color offset just a bit and not have to deal with that so much. Okay, so that's fine. And we'll go ahead and double click this one. And here, here. Let's go ahead and keep Let's roughen this up just a little bit. Alrighty. So we've got our ice cream cone here. Uh, I'm not digging this bottom so much. Let's go ahead and crank that specular down just a bit. And maybe roughen it up. For our environment, that's fine. What else? What else? Lighting, let's go ahead and make this a product render. Now, uh, if you did have like a very translucent material on here, you could change this to have a little bit of subsurface scattering on there so it's not quite so cartoony. Uh, that would be under your translucent. You could probably start here. It's going to take a little bit longer to render. Once I get my new system, pretty soon we'll have a better, I'll have more more cores to run with. I don't want to break my uh, little laptop here. It usually does a fine job, but, you know, I'll go back to basic performance here. But you can play with that. We'll go back to um, plastic here to render a little bit faster. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. In your opinion, is it worth buying a quadro for ZBrush mainly? Not at all. Sorry, the ones I'm talking about in the intro to ZBrush part two. Uh, I missed the first part of that. Sorry, the ones I'm talking about. Uh, and also, when it made me log in, it dumped my chat. So, um, the ones I'm talking about are the intro to ZBrush part two. I'm not sure uh, which one, which videos you're talking about. I had a custom UI in R7. When I load in R8, it loaded the old style R7 buttons, not keep the nice blah, blah, blah. I would rebuild it. I would take screenshots and just rebuild your UI, and I do that between every release. Now, a point release, you can go from like P2 to P3, and it, it'll upgrade it without ruining your interface too, but you can always copy those two. If you're going from like R7 to R8, rebuild it. There's no, it just make sure that, just to ensure that you're able to, um, get, there's no little gremlins in the system from old, uh, stuff from R7. So that's what I did. I just took screenshots of all my custom stuff and then rebuilt it from scratch in R8. And I also took that opportunity to do a little bit of house cleaning and kind of revamp and make it a little bit nicer. Um, uh, yes, the cone pattern is a Boolean. Whenever this goes on video on demand, you can rewind it and that'll give you the little walk step through, step by step. It's basically just taking the cone geometry. I mean, you could do an array, but since it had a slight taper to it, I didn't want to fiddle with that. 
basically just took out each individual one of these and then just pushed it in. Um, <laughs> I could add some frost onto the ice cream if I was any good. Uh, I think on this one here, I might have to go into like maybe the material graph and do another like noise on the specular here. Let's see if we can do uh, textures. Let's go back to uh, trying to see if there, I mean, I guess noise is probably our best bet. So why can't I ever find noise when I go in here? There we go, noise texture. Let's put another noise into the specular here. Onto the ice cream here, and that'll maybe, it looks like that ice cream got awful dark. So now with that, um, you know what we can also do? Let's, uh, what was the hotkey for that? Preview color, preview alpha, preview bump. I'm going to also go in here just to make this go a little bit faster. I'm going to go to image region and I'm just going to move this thing down. So that we're just looking at a little tiny section of this. Because again, once I get my new system, won't be a problem. I'm going to have a lot of cores to throw at Keyshot, but right now my poor little computer streaming and doing this at the same time uh, isn't helping that much. So let's go ahead and make this ice cream a little bit softer here. And now we've got the specular in here. So I'll go here to scale. Let's go ahead and preview this. I'm going to hit, uh, what is that? Preview color C. Let's scale this down. And we'll go ahead, I wonder if we can just do a quick invert on that. So if we go color one here, we're going to make this one white. And then color two, we'll make that black. And you could put an invert node in here, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, scale is fine. Magnitude. Let's go ahead and really contrast that. And now let's say we want to preview... And then we'll go out of this image. So you could do maybe, I mean, if you wanted like chunks of stuff on here, you could do a label and have it on here, or you could go in the ZBrush and actually give it uh, a sheen with nano mesh or something like that. But um, yeah. And let's take this one. Roughness, shinier, maybe. Uh, it's Keyshot for ZBrush, the standalone version. This is the Keyshot for ZBrush. I don't use Keyshot enough to w justify just getting the standalone, so it's easy for me just to say, oh, I'll get the much cheaper version and just go through ZBrush because I, I would do that anyways. Um, is it worth spending the extra for Keyshot for ZBrush once I already own a license of Toolbag 3 if it's not that much different? Um, it's kind of up to you. I have both. Toolbag 3 is pretty cheap. Uh, ZBrush for uh, Keyshot for ZBrush is pretty cheap. You know, it depends on how, how much you value your time and how much you're going to actually use this. If you're never going to use it or you're not going to use it enough to um, justify putting that kind of money down, go, no, obviously don't do it. But um, in my case, I do this all the time and it's easier for me. It pays for itself just in approvals alone. So if I can just do smoke and mirrors all day long and key shot and I just throw it in here and it's quick and easy, um, my time, you know, I can, I can put a monetary value on my time and go, okay, if that saves me an hour a week for 52 weeks, that's 52 hours worth of, you know, time spent on something I'd rather not as far as like exporting, importing, blah, 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 the dialing in and adjusting stuff. So at that point, it's an easy decision. Cool. Um, I have not, but uh, that's what's coming up next. So we'll see how that goes as far as the new system. All right, cool. Ah, sprinkles, that would have been a good one. All right, so this is where we where we would end up heading up if we wanted to do this. So if I want to, um, you know what? Let's just in case. I'm going to take this one here, and we're going to go to let's do file, save as ice cream, and then we're going to go to the materials here, and we'll go to the material. Right? We'll save the library, and we're going to throw this into miscellaneous. And we'll double click this one and we'll save this one also into miscellaneous. Probably should have named it first, but that's okay. 
So we can go ahead and we'll shut down key shot. And let's make some, uh, if you're from Pennsylvania, you might call these jimmies. But uh, sprinkles for everyone else. Or maybe you have your own colloquialism. Shout them out in the chat. We'll learn them all. So I'm going to go over here to my Make Polymesh 3D. Actually, you know what? Let's hit, d uh, let's make it a Polymesh 3D. Let's hit W. And let's go to BI Brush Insert. I think there's a sphere under our primitives here. So we're going to hit M. There's a Insert Sphere, Tetrasphere, Octosphere, Isosphere, Polysphere is what I'm looking for here. So I'm going to hit W. And we're going to go up here and we're going to grab our Polysphere. And we're just going to add, grab this Polysphere here. So I'm going to hit Q. I'm going to go to the side. I'm going to hold that Control invert that or you can do control alt and then hold down control and we can just pop this out and now we got a little sprinkle here um, let's go ahead and make this a little bit longer that'll kind of give us the thinness we're working for hit d that's a good enough sprinkle right so if i just leave this sitting out here let's try and do maybe a nano mesh on this thing so if we alt tap this one here how do we want to do this so if I do an insert nano mesh brush, it's going to put it everywhere, but we can kind of control the upward surfaces. So I go to the top here. I can go to, I'm going to give this a shot. Let's go to poly groups and we'll go to from front. And let's do that again. I just want to get a more obvious. Okay, so we've got all these top facing surfaces. Uh, we'll be able to catch sprinkles and then we can kind of dictate from here. It's like, okay, we have these ones here, but this last one's probably not going to get too many. So I'm going to go ahead and invert that. Hold down control alt and we'll say here is where sprinkles are likely to show up. So now we can hit uh, control W. And now when we go to put sprinkles on here, we can go to insert. Uh, what am I looking for here? Face. Insert nano mesh onto polygroup all because we just want to do it on the blue, light blue ones here. And now we can hit M and now we can just grab that poly mesh sphere 3D that we have. And let's go ahead and put those on there. Uh, key shot for ZBrush plus the key shot bridge. Yeah, so you have to buy, you'll get the key shot for bridge, bridge ZBrush and key shot bridge, which will send everything over. And then uh, you can do that. That's what I'm using right now. Um, you mentioned one of your videos you don't sculpt seam stitches anymore do it in ZBrush. What exact reason for this? More crisp results with textures. Yeah, so basically, if you do it in ZBrush and you put your stitches in, so let's do, let's do some stitches real quick. So if we go here, uh, number one, so if you have this sweet object that we're using here, and not to say you can't, you can, just, <clears throat> you can absolutely do whatever you want, uh, but in this case here, if we go to number, you know, if we want to do like a rolling stitch, let's go to our brushes here. And we'll go to, um, what am I looking for here? The weave, no. The tracks, no. The stitch. So number one, what you'd have to do is you'd have to somehow get your RGB values to play nice um, with your stitches if you wanted to kind of roll these on here. You know, which, you know, again, it's really difficult to control with this type of thing. Um, but we're probably not going to do stitches like that. We're going to do stitches like, uh, you know what, we can actually just do a stitch brush really quick. We'll just take this one here. And we'll go back into white here. So we'll make this into a stitch. So we're going to go to insert uh, multiple edge loops here. And we'll turn off interactive elevation. And we'll just put a couple divides in here. And I'm going to hold down control. Alt, and then we're just going to pull this up just a bit. So let's say this is going to be our stitch. Um, if you want to, you can also take these ends down here and rotate them down, but that's good enough. This is just a demonstration. So we're going to go ahead and hit B, create insert mesh, new, and then we're going to go to our stroke, and we're going to go to uh, turn on curve mode. And that'll give us, oh, you know what? Let's turn off try mesh brush. So underneath the brushes here, let's go to modifiers and say it's not a tri-parts brush. There we go. And they're all end to end here. So I'm going to go here to our stroke, which is also underneath here. And we're going to go to curve step and we're going to crank that up just a bit. Not that much. 
There we go. Good enough. Uh, so now if we want to use this stitch brush on our original object here. Let's make sure our depth is okay. So underneath our brush settings here, we'll go to depth. And it's going to be poking down a little bit. So if we drag this along here, they're not quite inset. So we're going to put that, it'll embed them a little bit here. So we've done that amount of work and we have stitches. And now, you know, I can just, uh, what I would probably do is go here to split mass points. And then I would say this object here is going to be filled with that color. And then this object here, just for material ID purpose, is going to be filled with that color. Now, I go ahead, I game res this thing, I bake it out. Two things I have to worry about. Number one is, am I going to get a clean bake around each individual one of these? Number two, I'm going to have to worry about, what if I want to change the spacing or the height? Are they bumping out too much? Are they bumping out too little? Um, am I getting a clean bake? All of that stuff, if I have to make a change, I have to go back to my source in here. I've already lost the curve, so now I have to go in here and think, you know, how do I change this curve? Um, the good news, the good thing about this is you can go in here and you can do very, very precise uh, edits to your curve, but also in the texture, you can probably do it as well. So what I prefer to do is just in Painter, just go through here and make a separate fill layer that has an alpha for the um, stitches here. So I know I'm getting a very, very clean mask. So I don't have to, ba I'm not baking anything. I'm just getting a clean mask right off the texture. And then also I can go in there and on the fly adjust how high it is. I can duplicate that off, soften it up. And uh, if you go to my channel, on my YouTube channel, I, I walk through that. But that would be the reason why it's just a lot of extra work if I want to make changes. It's all about being as non-destructive as possible. So the less destructive you work, the more changes you can make down the pipeline and not have to pay for it. If you want to make slight variations or changes, it's you have to go back to if you have to go back to your source every time oh, and bake through, yuck, gross. It's much easier to do way down here in the pipeline and just make changes on the fly than it is to go all the way back to your source and make changes and bake it all the way through your pipeline and all that good stuff. So that's why I would personally um, just do it in the texture. At, if I'm doing production, if I'm just doing like beauty renders and beauty shots for like ZBrush Central front page art station stuff, then absolutely, you know, just build it in. You can get a really nice result. But we've got our Jimmy here. We've got our sprinkle here. I'm going to go ahead and do an undo delete on all this stuff here. And if you haven't, we went over the plugins last time. I think last week we went over the new ZBrush plugins. So if you go to... Actually, let's also do ice cream sprinkles. I'm just trying to look at. Okay, so some of these, it looks like it wasn't just sprinkled on. It was like dipped into sprinkles, so they are just like plopped right on there. This is more what I was thinking as far as like where they would end up as just top down surfaces. But, I mean, if you want to just make it look like it was just rolled around in sprinkles, then you can just skip all the parts where we divide it up into different polygroups here. Um, what was I talking about? Sprinkles. Um, stitches. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was going somewhere with that. Um, but, cool. Okay, so we got sprinkles here. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to use insert nano mesh. So if we go here and we're going to do... Sprinkles. Now these are the top surfaces. Make that a little more obvious. Okay, so these light pink surfaces. We're going to drag our new uh, jimmies here. So we're going to take this one. We're going to insert nano mesh polygroup all. I'm going to hit M, and we're going to put our sprinkles right through here. And now if we just drag these out, we're going to get sprinkles on there. Um, if you want to make them all uniform, uh, one thing you can do to make it, uh, you can go over here to geometry, modify topology here and you can go to a line edge and that'll um no not a line edge uh what is it what is it spin edge not a line edge it is spin edge or is it a line edge i'm trying to remember um one of these things will make them all point the same way you can also you know that that might have been it actually um another thing you can do is go down here to your poly groups we're looking at nano mesh now we have a nano mesh on here we can go through here and you know what? These are going to be, how many colors do we want to make this thing? We can do three, let's do three different colors. I mean, we can make them rainbow colored. Eh. Let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I've dragged those out and now I'm going to go through and we're going to do 
uh, alignment, you can say align to normal as well, and that'll go ahead and align those. So now we can do a Z rotation, just gonna rotate them that way, which you don't need now. What we're looking for here is probably more Y rotation, X rotation, and you can do variances within the Y rotation and uh, X rotation here, but that's probably, that'll work. Now, if you wanna just make it look a little bit more random, what you're gonna wanna do is we're just gonna go over here to the random seed and random array and random distribution. So we can just start randomly populating these sprinkles on here. So now if we make these all one color, what we can do is we can say, I'm gonna copy these settings here. And now if I wanna put another nano mesh on here, I can hold down shift and pull this out. And now we can just paste on index one, those settings here and then we'll go back to the random seed and we'll just random seed those around, random distribution. And then we'll drag another one, hold down shift and we'll do paste and then we'll do another random distribution here. Random seed. So we're just gonna kind of randomly scatter these different poly groups of different colors here. We'll do one more. I'm gonna grab this one here Done shift, paste, random seed it, random distribution. Okay, so now that we have that, and we go to inventory, uh, instead of sitting here and going one to mesh a bunch of times, let's try and do a geometry, uh, convert BPR to geo, and that'll give us actual geometry, which gives us all the same group. So let's undo that. All right, so maybe we do have to do this. We'll go one to mesh, one to mesh, different poly group? Yes. One to mesh, one to mesh. Okay, that's what I was looking for was the different poly groups here. So now uh, we can hold down control shift. We're gonna grab this top one here, control shift A, and now we can do split hidden. And now we've got all our jimmies here, our sprinkles, and then we can go to split group split. And now we've got sprinkles one, sprinkles two, sprinkles three. So now we'll be able to assign different colors to those. So I'll tap this one back here. We'll go back to, I'll say control W, dynamic, smooth subdiv of four. And then these ones here, we'll go ahead and turn on dynamic here, but we'll just do a smooth subdiv of one because they're already pretty small and pretty smooth here. There we go. So now that we've got that, we'll send that back over real quick. We'll just do a really quick one. Now we already have our material saved, so it should be pretty quick. So we'll do um, render, key shot, external render here. Catch up on our one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, whenever I change monitors, it always shoots key shot off to the side here. So now we can go to our miscellaneous and we can go, you are this and then you are this one and then we're going to go to plastic hard shiny and we'll do always use reference okay we're going to do an orange and we're going to do a yellow, I guess we can make them different themes. Let's do a light blue. And actually I should have done a rotation array. These all fell, uh, or a rotation, a little bit more of a randomized rotation on one of the axes because these are all falling in very much the same area, but that's okay. You guys get the idea. You can make changes all you want. Red, and I guess white, or let's do purple. Oh man, now I want ice cream. Let's go to our environment here and we'll do uh, maybe a ZBrush environment. Put it in a courtyard under a tree. Let's do an interior. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> a giant ice cream cone. Uh, let's see, let's go to uh, interior here. Again, we'll put it back in a conference room maybe.
These are just fun to play with. I like that one. And yeah, we can just kill that environment. Lighting, product lighting. Whew. All right, there we go. We got the sprinkles in there. I would put some noise into that sprinkle um, and these sprinkle materials as well, just to kind of break those up in here. And you don't have to go through the material graph. You can just go in here to textures and go in here to like bump or specular. Then you can right click those and just say, I want a noise uh, texture in here. And then you can just scale that down and kind of break up your uh, noise like that. So anywho, thanks for showing up everybody. Um, <laughs> cool. Perfect. All right. So whew, we did it. That was one thing I wanted to go over. So we made an ice cream cone and it was a little bit, uh, you know, we talked about a lot of options, talked all about a lot of settings and stuff. So second, second time through is always faster. Third time through is always faster. And then pretty soon you'll be an ice cream making maniac. All right, so uh, let's go through my streaming topics here again. Um, Batman Cowl was one of them as well. So uh, do we put lighting, product lighting? Yeah. Man, it's a really good ice cream. All right, I know what I'm going to have for breakfast. So we'll go ahead and save this as ice cream. Yay. All righty. Go ahead and shut key shot down here. And let's go in here. Let's talk about how we might approach a cowl. Um, for this one here, if we want to save this and play with it later, we can go into uh, streaming and we'll just go ahead and do a new folder. That'll be our first ice cream there. Okay. Uh, let's kill ZBrush. And we'll launch it back up. <laughs> if I could, I would only eat such a thing if I could get away with it. <sighs> All right, so we've got this. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Batman Cow. So first of all, I'm going to need a head. Um, let's use the demo female head. That'll be good. All right, so we've got this female head here. Now I need to do a little bit of research here. I'm a child of the 90s, and I want to make sure I know what a Batman cow looks like. I know. Uh, and also, which one you want to do. Uh, there's obviously different variations here, so I'll just take one that's vaguely familiar to me. And we'll go ahead and make a Batman cow. So we have a, a face here. Uh, if we want to, we can hit D to put dynamic subdivisions on her head here. We can do Shift D. Um, but we'll go ahead and smooth that out later. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and turn off perspective, turn on the floor, go into subtool here. And let's kind of map out where we want this cowl to go. So just to make a really quick uh, variant of this, what we can do, I mean, you could start with DynaMesh and just kind of cut in where you want, mask it, and then Z-Remesh it. Um, you can also go through and slice. Let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and just mask out what we want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this head off. I'm going to hit Control-D a couple times. I'm going to go into solo mode here. And we're just going to mask where we want this thing to end up, uh, which basically looks like where we don't want it to end up is probably easier. So it's going to go right under the nose here, back and then forward, and then back around down to the chin, and then give her a little bit of chin support. Uh, some of these have chin support, some don't. If you don't have chin support, just put that mask right down here. So this is where we don't want this to show up. Control tap to invert that. And now the rest of this is going to be uh, cowlish. Now, in order to get these shapes a little bit better, what I'm going to actually do is let's go ahead and dynamesh this. So I'm going to turn off project, turn off blur, dynamesh this thing. And uh, this is a fine resolution here. So basically what I don't want, let's go to preferences, edit, turn off line cursor surface. So we can just smooth this down and dynamesh these things because we don't need any of this information here. Um, around the eyeballs here, let's, let's move the resolution up just a little bit and give us a little bit more control. Uh, so this is the basic shape we're looking for. And now it'll make it a little bit easier for us to go, okay, here, here, here. I don't want, and now we can go ahead and you can extract this out, but um, let's go ahead and make sure this is where we want it. It looks like uh, when I was dragging this out, it actually has to go up a little bit. 
down. And now hold down control, go to mask pin here. And we'll go ahead and mask this out. Down and around. Okay. So yeah, just paint in where you want this mask to go. Now at this point, like I said, you could uh, extract this, zero mesh this. Let's go ahead and we'll hit control W. Then I give us a poly group where we have this here make it more obvious and then we got to decide uh, where we want these uh, little wings to go. Now you can go in here with like maybe a snake hook and just go like woo there we go we're good to go. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just grab a cube and we're going to have a little bit more control over how these things look. Um, and by, by control I mean just being able to control them separately at first. Let's go ahead and turn on L sim here so we can scale along the local axis just so we can kind of, because we are going to merge these things together eventually, uh, but this will just give me a little bit more control as far as like, you know, does it go here and then back, or does this rotate back, or does it go thick to thin, or how tall is it? I can just work on it separately. So let's go ahead and split mass points here. It's under your split menu. And now we'll just go here to Q mesh, single poly, and we'll just Q mesh these up, and then hold on control alt, and then we'll go to unmesh mesh center, and then we'll just scale this in here. And then, uh, you know what, the points are cut off. Okay, and then scale this in here. And then it looks like they kind of turn in a little bit here, like this. Something like that. And again, it depends on what reference you're looking at. Some of them really stumpy, some of them really long. Um, some of them go to a really big point, some of them don't. So we can kind of just, something like this maybe. Um, Let's see, let's go ahead and crease this thing down a little bit, and we'll go ahead and do like a crease level of three, smooth subdivision of four. And now we can just go in here and just kind of move these points around. Give us that look we want. Um, now that for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off her head, and we're just gonna look at the Dynamesh. So this is va vaguely uh, what we're looking for here. And again, feel free to make this however you want it to look. Now on this one, you know, we do have our poly group here, uh, but we can also start going in here and maybe go in here with our standard brush here, Z add. We'll crank that up to like 34. We'll hit L to make sure lazy radius is turned on and we'll crank that up just a bit. And we can say, okay, so along the corner of this, it kind of looks like it does this and maybe these kind of match up a little bit better. There we go, perfect. Like so, and you can kind of just build in that temporal line here and if you want to you can also just go through here and just move it because again this is a mask that's going to sit over her head let's go back to smooth stronger here all right um i think we're in good shape except for the eyebrows here these are going to be pulled to ridges here so i'm going to turn off lazy radius for now and we can kind of go through here we can kind of stylize this a little bit now we can also do this on the actual sculpt this is kind of just doing it in our dynamesh so when we build this out and zero mesh it um, it may take into account some of this stuff if you're going to be doing crazy things like this i would say definitely go ahead and do it um, if you're just going to be doing a little bit of minor sculpting then it, this part isn't really that important we can kind of start building that in there so now we'll go to polygroup here uh, we're also going to polygroup out the eyeballs here. So when we zero mesh this thing, let's go ahead and go into solo mode here and let's crank up this resolution just a little bit more. Just trying to get a nice clean line around here. In fact, let's go ahead, let's do it this way. Control shift, let's grab these eyeballs here. These go way in. There we go. and way up. I wonder if it might be easier just to hold on control and roll that around. may have also been able to get away with um, dynameshing or uh, polygrouping by group surface normal, but let's go ahead and do this. All right, so basically where the green is is where we want our stuff to go. And now if we merge these down, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control-W, make this all one polygroup, and then we're gonna shoot this head up one and then merge that down. 
I have a hotkey for my merge menu. Uh, of course, before we do that, let's go ahead and isolate this back out. Let's go ahead and split this one. Uh, we want to do a crease level of three, dynamic sub to a smooth of four, and then we want to apply that to make those actual subdivisions. So now when we merge these things down, that's under your merge menu here. Merge down, there we go. And now we can dynamesh these together. And now basically what we're looking for is this one here and then uh, these wings, these little ears up here. Uh, if we hold down shift, we can blend this in just a little bit more. Something like this. So now if we take this here and here and we do a delete hidden, we have our beginnings of our mask here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slice this neck off here. So we'll go to slice curve and we'll just put a slice here and now we can just get rid of that. So control shift, delete hidden. Now I am gonna go ahead and smooth out these transitions here because when we zero mesh this thing, uh, it's gonna wanna pick up all that aliasing here. So what we're gonna do is go down here to masking mask border, we can go ahead and go to grow mask, invert that, and then we can go to our deformation and we can just uh, polish it or maybe polish by features. Just tap that a couple times, it's kind of smooth those transitions out. You can also go in here, uh, we go into solo mode here, go out of solo mode here, and we turn our head back on. You're gonna see this head is kind of embedded in the face a little bit, um, not a huge deal because we can also give it thickness and move this stuff around. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it for now. And now we can just zero mesh this thing. And also around the corners of the eyes, we can go ahead and go in here with like maybe move Accu and kind of pull this around a little bit. Let's go into transparency ghost here. Alrighty. Uh, so now it's just a simple matter of hitting Control W, make this all in poly group. You don't have to do this because when you zero mesh it, it'll ignore your groups until you, unless you tell it specifically to keep your groups. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to geometry, zero mesher. Uh, if we want to uh, project back to any detail we had sculpted here, we can go ahead and duplicate this off first. And then we're in solo mode, so zero mesher. So we're just looking at this, by the way. Um, this is 255,000 active points. We have X turned on, so I'm gonna say target polygon count of five is fine. Adaptive size, I'm gonna drop down, and we'll zero mesh. And we'll check the chat. Cool, hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Uh-oh, am I back to normal? Looks like everything's okay. Um, okay, yeah, so I basically just did Batman Cal, and I'm just kind of looking at all of these things together, just trying to get a, uh, just an overview of what I'm looking for, and I think this is fine. I think this will work just great. So we have this here, so now all we need to do is we can go to, we can give it thickness, we can also just like bridge through here. Um, let's just give it some thickness, I think. I don't, uh, normally, uh, sometimes I try to avoid sculpting on thin surfaces here, but in this case, I think I'll make an exception here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna cue mesh, I'm going to extrude a single poly, although we're gonna get some interior faces here. Uh, okay, let's, let's cap this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my display properties, turn on double, and I'm going to do a couple quick bridges here. So I'm gonna take this one here, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna bridge edges, I'm gonna bridge this edge to this edge and this edge to this edge here. And I'm just trying to take the close, hole all, close holes operation, uh, take some of the guesswork out of that, that operation. And then along this jawline here, I'm gonna go here to here, here to here. And then we can go ahead and cap and in set this one here. So I suppose we could just go here and we can go to close convex hole and we can just close these ones off. Oops. And then control shift W and then hold down control and just pull this back and that'll just add an edge ring and now we can scale this down with LSIM turned on. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and reset this so we can push this straight back in here. And we can bevel these lines as much as we need to. Uh, and now we can do we can do much the same thing here. So we can go ahead and just do a close. Let's do a concave hole on these ones here. That'll be fine, I think. Although I really would prefer doing uh, bevels along inside here. Hmm, is there a non-boring way to do this? Probably not. Think, think, think. I could bring this in. I could bridge it. All right, we'll just bridge this really quick. So we'll go ahead and bridge edges right here. Oops. Because what I want to do is have the ability, I mean, I can just bevel along this um, polygroup here, but if I want to do the interiors, it's a lot easier just to have these things nice and lined up. Uh, okay, so we'll go to the side here. Straight across. And you can also, if you do like every other one, you can just go through and you can do a close holes and then you can go through and delete edges. Uh, these edges are getting awful long here, so I'm going to go ahead and just bridge them. It might save you a little bit of time on smaller surfaces, but we'll do it the boring way. I'm trying to think if there's a more exciting dynamic way to do this, because you can close a convex hole, you can close a concave hole. Um, Yeah, it's going to want to pull to the right or left. And you can also do that and then mirror and weld. Uh, we are going to end up mirroring and weld this just to get a center line back. And this is the this is the part where I want a, a DJ. Just turn up the music. And then you can rock out to me bridging edges. Speaking of, what are we doing on time? Okay, we're okay. We can finish this out, no problem. Oh, and if you're ever doing this and you're like, ah, stop doing stuff, just hover over a face and say, do nothing, and then hover over a point and say, do nothing, and now it will do nothing as we go back and forth. And the other good thing is this is all giving us a one polygroup. Not that we couldn't just group by normals at this point. But uh, with this, we can go ahead and inset. All right, fine. Let's get in here. I'm also using my mouse for this. This is one of the few instances where uh, I usually need a steadier hand. And I'll just grab my mouse as opposed to using my... Um, Wacom. So then we'll go ahead and do a quick mirror and weld across the X, and then we'll just go ahead and cap these here and these here. <gasps> we made it. Okay, so that's all inset in there. Now we have this Dynamesh here. So now what we can do is we can give a shot. We can say, okay, I want to go ahead and inset uh, polygroup all region, and we'll just go ahead and inset this back just a bit. Hopefully that plays nice here. Let's go ahead and smooth these out. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down. Oops, let's go ahead and turn off Dynamesh too. We don't need Dynamesh anymore. So we hold down Control Shift and we'll go ahead and grab these orange ones and red ones here. Actually, you know what? Let's grab the orange ones and we'll go ahead and smooth these back. And also, if you go down here to the Smooth Brush modifiers, you can say Min Connected to 1, and now you will be able to smooth back uh, just one. Just to kind of back these off just a tad. Okay. Now we should be able to see, let's see, we'll go over here, we'll go to bevel edge with complete. And we'll just put a bevel along there. And same thing for the eyeballs. We'll kind of back these off just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do an insert. Actually, we'll take this one. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Insert single edge loop here. 
And if we do insert single edge loop here, it's going to go all the way around. So let's go ahead and just do a um, you know what, I can probably live. Ah, don't want to cut this thing around. Eh, not that big a deal. So let's see, let's hit D and see how uh, it fares. So now, since we have these outside polygroups here, and it's all the same polygroup, right? So if you don't mind inflating up everything, you can simply go in here to Q mesh, polygroup all, and then you can just hold down shift as you kind of inflate this along its normal. Uh, but then you might get fatter ears. So you can also just go through here and just kind of manually move this thing out. So we can just kind of just kind of pull where you want this thing to end up. Now, when you put on your cowl, do you want a big lump over here? Probably not. And also, probably it's mashing your ears up. So what I'm going to do is just modify this face geometry a bit. So we're going to go in here to the ears here. Let's go ahead and hold down Control, Mask, Pin. And we'll take these ears. And then we'll Control, uh, control Tap. That'll blur our mask a little bit. Control, Tap to invert. And we'll go through here. And we'll go ahead and like rotate these back a little bit. And also scale them non-uniformly and we can also probably just go in here with our move brush so these are your this is your cartilage getting mashed underneath your cow it's the dirty the dirty side of cow wearing and they don't talk to you about is mashing up your ears all right so this should make this a little bit more and it also keeps you honest a little bit. It's like, well, you do have to compensate for ears in there. If you make it perfectly flat along here, it's going to read as uh, an earless person. But now you kind of have an indication of, oh, there was actually ears in there. So now we can go through here. We'll just move this out. If we want to move this to a point, I'm just going to use move accu. And we can just pull like this polygon here to more of a point. And again, just looking at the reference here, um, this kind of just goes downish. So, and it's, some of these are a soft transition, some of these are a harsher transition, so we'll just call that whatever. Okay, so we've got the nose here. The nose goes out to a point on some of these, so we'll go ahead and just pull this out to a quick point. And then the sculpting part is where we're gonna, we can add the lines. Now, you could have zero mesh those in, um, but I think this will work just fine. Uh, what is this piece here? This is our original Dynamesh. We don't need this anymore. Just go ahead and delete that. Oh, uh, that was if you wanted to project. Um, actually, let's cancel that. So if we did want to project, for instance, I totally forgot about that. We turn this off, turn this off. You want both of these showing. So if you wanted to project like these here, you could just isolate those polygroups here and then just do, really? Project all. It's also underneath here in your project menu. You can just do project all, and that'll project uh, back to your detail. But I've already modified it enough to kind of pushed it out, so it's not going to work that well. But that's okay. We didn't really lose much, so I'll just go ahead and delete. Let's make sure that's the one we want to delete. Yes. Okay. And now we've got this head here that we can start sculpting on. So I'm going to go ahead and say Control. Since I'm going to start really sculpting, if I want to do a dynamic subdiv, I can just hit D, and that's what it's going to look like when I subdivide. Everything looks fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control D. And that'll go ahead and give me real subdivisions. And now it's just a matter of turning everything back on. And of course, we were moving this stuff out. I forgot. And our cow kind of stopped here. So uh, now it's just a matter of going in there and sculpting out the details. So we have subdivisions, which is nice, which will allow us to kind of work our mesh. at different levels as we as we kind of go through. So let me see if we have, um, you know, some of these have like really pronounced, let's go ahead and hit L to turn lazy mouse, lazy radius back on of our lazy mouse. And then we can kind of, we can build up a ridge. You can use your Damien standard or your standard brush or whatever brush you'd like to use. And then you can use your clay brush to kind of build out to this here. And then you can hold down shift and smooth it down. You can also go into your H polish. You can hold down alt and you can really just like polish up to a point here. Um, same thing for your uh, nose here. If you want to just pull this to a point, you can go through here. Is this what they have? Some of these are really weird looking. You can uh, pull down here and you can kind of just build up to a point like so. And it's really just kind of dialing in 
you know, where you want these kind of graphic lines to go and also how angry or you want those brows to be. Who's going to be an angry lady and how much that you want built in and how much you want that pulled down so we can just uh, make that really mad. This Batman's always in a bad mood. And then we can just sweep this over to the side here and pull this up. And then as we're continuing to work, we can just hit Control D and continue subdividing up. And then if you ever want to, you can back back down. So if you're ever fighting your smooth subdivision levels, um, you know, just use your subdivision levels over here subdivision one, two, and three, and you can just go up the subdivisions or down the subdivisions to get uh, whatever look you're going for here. And because this is a separate mesh, you'll be able to dial that in pretty quickly. Cool. Uh, have you used Octane before? What do you think of it compared to Keyshot? Octane is great. If you go to my um, YouTube menu, we use it, in fact, on my uh, reptile creature series. So here's my YouTube list. I use it on my creature series here. Let me see if I have a specifically uh, octane materials. I, I also I ray and painter is fun. Um, I talk a little bit about octane materials here. This is one of those the freebie videos. The rest of them are on Gumroad. But um, so we talk a little bit about octane in that one. Um, it's good. They're all good. I like them all. As soon as I get my new system, I'm going to be doing a lot of different rendering on different types of renders. Um, do you have multiple custom UI menus? If so, have you grouped stuff and what keyboard shortcuts have you assigned? Um, if you want mine specifically, let's see. If you go to my Gumroad page and you scroll all the way down to the, uh, there's the creature production files with the intro to ZBrush files. The intro to Z and these are both free, by the way. Go to the intro ZBrush files, and you'll have uh, you'll have these two guys sitting here if you want those, and then also the Z startup folder. So if you want specifically uh, my UI, you would just take that Z startup folder, and then if you go to let me see if I remember this. Yes. Okay. You're going to want to go to C users public public document ZBrush data Z startup, and then in here you're going to copy that user uh, custom user interface for our eight config file. Uh, you don't need the startup document. You can use your own. Um, if you have your own hotkeys, you can use your own hotkeys. So just don't copy the hotkeys folder in here. Or if you do want to use my hotkeys, they're all right in here. Um, so all my hotkeys, you can just read them right through here. So all these, I have my personal hotkey. Is this, so this is the custom menu here, Pav Custom, and then that's assigned to Alt-A. So that'll just pop up wherever I am in my screen. Um, and then my other hotkeys are like Alt Q for Z Modeler, Alt D for Damien Standard, Alt C for Clay Brush, Alt B for Clay Tubes or Clay Buildup, Alt S for Standard, Alt H for H Polish, Alt T for Trim Dynamic, Alt Y for Pinch, um, Alt C for Clay, and possibly some others. Alt Y for Pinch, did I say that one? <laughs> um, they're all in there. I mean, obviously, there's nothing magical about that user interface or my hotkeys or me for that matter. But if you feel like you want to start from somewhere and just want to use those, then by all means, knock yourself out. Don't knock yourself out, but you can copy those into your Z startup folder and you'll be good to go. All right. So uh, we got this thing here. Let's go ahead and just like Batman. And of course, it's going to like pinch her nose pretty bad. She's going to sound like Christian Bale. I am Batman. And then we'll go in here to the Damien standard and we'll cut through here across the eyeball. And then through here, if you go into H polish as well. Now, if this was a thin mesh here and you were doing a bunch of like clay buildup and stuff, it's going to want to pull through the mesh. You'd want to be a little bit more careful about under your brush settings here. How are we doing on time? Okay. Under your brush settings, auto masking, turning on back face masking for anything where you're pulling along a, a thin surface here. So we're like, oh, clay buildup, it looks great. And then you go to the side. I have back face masking turned on. So again, if you're using clay buildup or any brush and you go to the side, it's like, oh, what did you do that for? Um, that's an instance where you would turn back face masking on. And then you can do this like so. But since we capped this, uh, we don't need to worry about that as much. So um, again, going through here. So now when we use H polish, we can use an H polish brush, pretty big H polish. We can just polish these things down. We can polish this to a point here. And what else? We got this here. 
let's go ahead and just do standard brush here and give her some cheekbones goes to her like zygomatic arch and again if you want to you can drop down a subdivision level and kind of dial in your bigger forms here and then go back into your clay brush and kind of build this up and then when you go up a subdivision level then you can start refining a little bit here so we've got this kind of built out and this kind of built out and this kind of built out oh also um, I forgot I was gonna work a little bit on this guy here let me load this up but I think I'll, I'll just do that on my channel so we also have if you missed it you can go to my YouTube channel and we made this guy last time so we got this guy uh, I didn't do the I did do some rendering here so if I go to mm -hmm, and this was just a key shot thing but we'll probably throw him into painter and maybe even put him in engine have him run around a little bit which would be kind of fun uh, but it might take me a while to get there we'll see how it goes Boy, this is chugging. Anyways, if you go to my YouTube channel and you go to live stream, uh, actually, it's probably not under my live stream full episodes right now. It's just sitting out in my videos here. You can watch the creation of Pickle Rick. And there we go. Let's close that down. So we go here. So this is a little more of a key shot render. And again, uh, he's kind of a cartoony render right now. So we're going to do a cartoony version, and then we're going to go through and do a, like an ultra-realistic version. Once I get my new system, we'll do a little bit of photogrammetry, and we'll photogrammetry a pickle. So we have an ultra-realistic pickle, and we'll kind of start with that, and then we'll figure out how to make these. Uh, if I need to get a rat skeleton going, uh, we'll go ahead and do that and do really, really, uh, maybe do some realistic fur and render that out, and that'll be kind of a fun project. So we'll, we'll give that a shot. Um, go back to this cow here. Alrighty. Okay, so we got this going over here, and it's on the left hand side, the right hand side, it kind of swoops up, and then just go in here and shift, smooth stronger. And the reason why I like to use smooth stronger is because it gives me just a little bit more leeway. If you just use regular smooth um, and you have it cranked up to 100, it's only going to smooth to that amount. With smooth stronger, it's going to smooth a lot. And then if it's smoothing too much, you can just hold down shift and drop that down. So it gives you just a wider range of smoothing, which I prefer. And then over here, if you want to sharpen these up, just go in here with H polish and you can just hold down Alt and then let go of Alt and you can polish up and polish down and really kind of, and if you want to also, you can go in here with your pinch brush and you can just kind of pinch these to a slightly sharper point. Like so. And uh, boy, she's really losing a lot of her femininity underneath this mask. This is a pretty intense mask. So at this point, you know, I would start making some, taking some artistic liberty, liberties here. And you can go through here. And not that she needs to be soft or friendly, but um, these are very, very masculine features that we're forcing onto her mask here. So you could, at that point, let's go ahead and, looks like I cranked that standard brush up accidentally when I was moving my smooth brush around. So you could go through here and maybe make some decisions to, you know, either soften these edges just a bit or this is a very I'll go ahead and just crank that down just a little bit here like it's just a very bony looking face which is cool and hardcore and all that um, but maybe not totally appropriate depending on what type of Batman character you're working on we'll go through here and we'll smooth this down just a tad And then we'll go ahead and just round these out. So again, as you're dividing this thing up and you're subdividing, hit control D, uh, you just get more and more detailed. If you need to step down in your subdivisions, you can certainly do that. Um, you can go in here to your solo and you can go through here and you can H polish any of these edges, which are maybe not behaving as well as they should. Do a little bit of cleanup here and et cetera, et cetera. Something like that. Hope that makes sense. And let's see, H polish this. And this was just more of a Z remesher giving me some triangles along an edge. Uh, not ideal, but I could either fix that or I could just quickly and lazily uh, fix it in post. We'll go through there and just smooth down the result. Got yeah, perspective turned on, like so. So now if we go back here, we can hit D. And now let's see how she turns out. 
Um, I guess we don't need to put that. It's good enough. All right, let's do this. How's everybody going over here? Thanks for showing up, everybody. And let's see if I have any rubber. Let's also change these, let's drop those CPU uses down so we don't stutter through um, OBS there. Um, do I have any rubber? Are you BB rubberized nylon? Let's see how that looks. Mm, that's not exactly what I was looking for. You can also use uh, the cloud library. Let's see if I can launch that up. So we can go like, okay. Got any cool rubbers in here? Nylon rubber, this is just regular rubber. I mean, we can make our own, it looks like, but let's see what this looks like. So we'll go ahead and just download this one. And let me go ahead and, I swear, I need to use this computer more. Give me a second here. There we go. So now when we do that, if I go to my downloads, oh, we got some more in here. We got soft silicone. Let's see how that looks. Or rubber. You can double click this one. And let's go ahead and put her in a more reflective environment here. That'll work. Let's make it a little shinier maybe. And then we guess we can drop some skin on here as well. And you know what else we could do? Let's see if this will work. Let's drop some emissive. Yeah, now we're talking. All right. So let's see, go to lighting, we'll go to product. Let that res in. Okay. Um, Looks like we're at 7.45. Any last minute questions we can go over? Oh man, my face is busted. Let's try to fix that real quick. Better? And let's see, streaming topics here. So we went over the Batman cow, we went over uh, the ice cream cone, which is cool. Now, if you wanted to do like an area light, uh, you could bring in a back plate that was like um, a background image of like a nighttime scene and then match your lighting to that. I don't really have a light nighttime scene. Oh, maybe I do. You just drag these in. <laughs> Not really super dark. You'd probably want to do like a a city, a city scene or something like that. And then you could match your lighting to something like this from, uh, let's see, environment here. I don't know, play with that. Kind of match those up. Let's go ahead and take this environment here and we'll rotate this around so that the lights coming from that direction. Dial that up and down maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Play with that. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. Um, what else? What else? Let's go ahead and change that environment here to color. There we go. That's kind of a cool look. And if you wanted to also, oh, you know what? Go to my, um, we went, uh, Pablo Munoz Gomez's 
uh, zbrushguides.com. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel playlists, there is um, ZBrush Guide Stylized Rendering. So let's do a little bit of that. That could be fun. Let me go here. We'll go ahead and pause this. I can go ahead and kill this. Discard. Kill that. Uh, just really quickly here, if we go to these materials, let's go to a matcap we don't like. We'll go to Reflect 3. I mean, not that we don't like it, but we're not going to necessarily use it anytime soon. So we can go to the comic key here, go to material, go to comic style rendering, and let's grab um, classic Batman here. Yeah. So now if we take this one and we just fill this, we'll go to color, fill object with RGB. And let's do MRGB and we'll do flat. Now this is going to remove anything from the eyes. But then if we go back here to this one here and we choose alt tap this one. And now we go to MRGB color, fill object. And let's see if we got a skin in there. So we'll choose another one. We'll do droplet. That's a cool one. And we'll go back in a comma here and we'll see if we have a skin. That'll work. So now with the face here, color, MRGB, fill object, eyeballs will go back to white to just a flat. All right. And now we got a cool comic U type render. We can go in here to BPR. No, don't go into, well, you can't go into Keyshot. So, oops, I forgot to turn Keyshot off. But when you do that, it will go ahead and throw that render into here. And so now you can do... Uh, all sorts of cool stuff in here. Pretty cool look. Let's go ahead and go into environment here. Interesting. Yeah, so play with that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and go to render turn off key shot and now when you do a BPR render uh, it'll go ahead and catch um, the shadows that you have so if we go up here to our lighting uh, light 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 uh, we can go ahead and like give us a light from this direction here so when we go in here and we cast our shadow it will go ahead and cast a shadow in that direction and now you can go in here to your shadow now if you can, you can also go in here to render and uh, you can go to the render shadow properties and you can change like the global strength down. So when you BPR render again, it's going to lighten that up just a bit. Or you can really crank it up and really darken it. Uh, but of course, once you have that, you can also do that as a separate pass. So you go to render here, you get a render passes and you can export these as your shaded, your depth, uh, your shadow pass all by itself, ambient occlusion if you wanted to use that. As well as when we were talking about the ZBrush plugins earlier, no ZBrush here. ZBrush Photoshop, you can use this. You can click on here for the instructions and you can use ZBrush to Photoshop to go ahead and just do a bunch of composites for you and it'll load up a Photoshop document for you in Photoshop to kind of manipulate. So super easy. Um, cool, so we got a question. When I zero mesh my character, sometimes creates a webbing like duck feet between digits. Any ideas cut these back open? Um, you can manually go through and edit that. So what I would do, <laughs> some fuzz on me. Um, <laughs> if we go over here to, let's start with a uh, poly mesh theory. Go back to my cap. Okay, so we've got a BI brush insert body parts, M hand. Um, you know what, we can also just hit W and just grab the hand. Uh, so if you have this one here, um, now Z mesh shouldn't web anything. If you're dynameshing stuff, it will sometimes web them together if you're working at a very low resolution. Um, so in this case, what I would do, and we've gone over this uh, when we did the bodies and stuff, if you go back to previous episodes on this channel, which by the way, I don't think I've linked that one, Pavlovich Workshop. This is the ZBrush Pavlovich Workshop here. Um, if you go through here and you're dynameshing at a lower resolution, and they're starting to web together. Can't even get it to work. 32. There we go. It's so starting to do this kind of thing. Um, I would say just hit control D and subdivide until you get to a point where, so we do like control D and we're going through here and we're just kind of building this up until you get to a point where you can dynamesh at a higher resolution. And when you dynamesh here, it won't web together. 
Um, and of course, you probably want to work on your hands separately from the body because your body, you're probably going to be dynameshing at a lower resolution. And but you know, just dynamesh up to the resolution you need to for each individual body part, like the hands, the arms, the body. You can work on them separately. And then once you get it to a certain detail point, dynamesh everything together at a higher resolution, Z remesh that result, project all, and then you'll be good to go. Like I said, if you go back down through here, um, go to the broadcast number one or broadcast number two or broadcast number three. We actually make the whole body and we go, I talk about all that stuff in, in order. A uh, way to get the surface noise to distort the geometry edges like on a sphere. The outer edges always look perfect. Surface noise to distort geometry edges on a sphere. Um, Well, sphere isn't going to have a whole lot of edges, but if it was an edge on a sphere like this, we go ahead and like delete hidden, and then we go in here to uh, close convex hole, and then we go to like maybe insert single edge loop. Now, in, in this case here, what we could do is we could go ahead and like do a whole um, crease polygroup. And then when we hit uh, dynamic, it's like, okay, yeah, that's a really, really sharp edge. So in that case, I would say, like, okay, crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two, and that'll go ahead and kind of back that off a little bit, or maybe crease level of one, smooth subdiv of three, or crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. And you can kind of dial those in to kind of back that edge off a little bit. Um, as far as surface noise, uh, if we have a cylinder here, there we go. Okay, yeah, I want to go ahead and do our crease level here with dynamic turned on, and then crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. That'll go ahead and back my edges off. Um, crease level of two even. Now, if it starts backing it off too much, you might have to put in a control loop here. For example, insert single edge loop. We could do this. If you want them both on the same side, what you could do are the same amount. We can go to inset flat island region, and we can like inset this down and then just tap on the bottom here. That'll make them both the same. Uh, now when we hit D, that'll kind of control that a little bit better. So you can go like crease level of one, smooth subdiv of four, and that'll go ahead and give you a really nice fall off or crease level of two, and that'll tighten that up a little bit. So you can kind of dial it in that way. As far as running surface noise along an edge, um, you would kind of have to like mask out, and this is just dynamically subdivided, but if we actually go control D, control D, control D, control D, um, you could go in here, oh boy, let's do this amount, okay, you could go in here, let's do increase all as well, I'm trying to think of a way to do surface noise on edges here, because you'd want to isolate them to probably just this range here, come on, there we go. Uh, let's make that all one polygroup here. So now we can, uh, we go over here to our surface noise. Now what you also could do if you wanted to, uh, if you subdivide this up, you can just pass noise along here through the actual geometry. So if we go to deformation, you can do a noise, um, uh, where are we at noise? You can just kind of noisy this up a little bit, but it's just going to put like, you know, obviously granular noise along an edge, which I don't know if you're looking for, but it's going to do basically the same thing if I go in here to surface noise and do, um, let's see, noise scale, hit OK. So if we have noise on here, you can mask this, and now the noise is just going to show up where the mask is. You can go in here to masking. We can turn on, uh, we can blur it, and then we can uh, turn on view mask, and now you can put noise just along an edge, like that if you want to, maybe. Okay, last question. Uh, we should lie Boolean where a subtracted Boolean makes a preview disappear. Uh, I can force it to a Boolean mesh to a BPR render and see the results, but it doesn't work with preview and it would be causing that. Uh, let's try it. Let's try it with a simpler mesh than this one. This one's pretty heavy duty. Let's go ahead and delete this one. So you're saying if I have a s cylinder and I make a polymesh 3D and I crease this thing and I turn on dynamic and then I duplicate this one out, and then I do a live Boolean render with that subtractive. And for some reason, sometimes subtractive Boolean makes the preview disappear. I haven't run into that. 
I don't know. I'll see if I can recreate that. I don't. I haven't done live boolean stuff in a while, honestly. Um, it hasn't been part of my workflow recently. Uh, but if I run into that, I'll uh, I'll bring it up here on my channel or both. I can do both. But yeah, it seems like. Let's see. There's a brush insert. Let's go to boolean. Oops. Live boolean meshes here, and we'll say we want like maybe this one. Or we can cycle through here. Yeah, they seem to be acting as I would expect here. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that if I can recreate it. Um, anyway, thanks everybody for showing up. Hopefully uh, we went over some stuff that is useful or at least techniques that are uh, something useful here. At this point, what you would probably want to do is go ahead and turn on... Uh, you want to make sure Live Boolean is on because if you notice, if you go down here to your Boolean mesh and you turn on uh, Make Boolean Mesh, if your Live Boolean isn't on, it's going to be grayed out. So you need Live Boolean on in order to see it. Dynamic Subdiv, because these do have dynamic subdivisions applied, Make Boolean Mesh. And then uh, if you go to my edges, or you, you mesh here, if you want to change these edges in between here, go to my YouTube stream, go to my ZBrush 408, what's new, and go to video 18, and that'll walk you through a couple options. Not all of them, there's a couple more options outside of that, but that'll get you a start. Cool. Yeah, give a put a put a ticket in there and maybe send them the file, and they can kind of work that uh, down. Yeah, awesome. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you next week.